Hi, my name is Gerald Simon and I'm the founder of Music Motivation. It's a company I created to help motivate musicians of all ages and skill level to learn music theory the fun way. I refer to it as Piano Fundamentals. And every week I come out with brand new Theory Tip Tuesday videos and other fun videos that piano students can watch and learn how to play music theory the fun way and it's a practical application of the music theory, what you can do with it. Today we're going to have a fun little lesson on a left hand walking bass pattern. Something you can do to play around with a 12 bar blues chord progression. Watch this. Let's have fun with this. So in today's lesson, what we're going to talk about is a fun little left hand pattern. Now I mentioned a 12 bar blues. 12 bar refers to 12 measures. So we have 12 measures. Generally, we're following the seventh chords, C seventh, F seventh, G seventh, depending on what key we're in. But we are following a chord progression where we have the seventh chords, one right after another, but we're also using 12 measures. Now. In this exercise, you can go to my website and download this free PDF handout. This is what we're going to be playing today. The left hand is created using a C sixth chord. Sometimes we refer to it as a C major sixth chord. It's a C major triad with a major sixth interval. So we have C, E, G, A. Watch my left hand. So my C major triad is C, E, G. If I add A on top of that, that is my major sixth interval from C. If I count up, I have C, D, E, F, G, A. One, two, three, four, five, six. From C to A is a sixth interval. It happens to be a major sixth interval. So sometimes we refer to it as a C major sixth chord, but it's called a C sixth chord. We're going to take that C sixth chord and break it apart. We're only playing quarter notes. So think like we're playing one, two, three, four. Now we're going to add the minor seventh interval on top of that. So that would be a B flat when we're starting on C and we go up seven, the major seventh would be B. Watch this. So we have one is C, two, the second would be D, the third from C would be E, the fourth would be F, the fifth would be G, the sixth would be A, which we talked about, and the major seventh would be B. But we are going to play the minor seventh. If you take any of these major intervals and you go down half a step, it creates a minor interval. So the minor seventh would be C to B flat. So what we are going to do is we are going to play that C sixth chord, break it apart, C, E, G, A, and add the minor seventh interval up on top. Watch this. Now I can start on F and do the same thing. Play the F sixth chord. Add the minor seventh interval up on top. I can go to G and do the same thing on G. 
play the G sixth chord, G, B, D, E, break it apart as quarter notes, and add the minor seventh interval on top. Pretty simple, okay? It's not very difficult at all to do. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start improvising. And I'm going to play this exercise as it is written, and then I'm going to explain a little bit about it. What we're going to do, we explained the C sixth chord, C E G A, that we broke apart. If you play it in root position, C E G A, the C is on the bottom. That is called C sixth root position. Now you can play whatever fingering is better for you, one, two, four, five, one, two, three, four, whatever fingering works better for you, this is root position. Now we're going to invert it, since there are four notes in the C sixth chord, C, E, G, and A, that means I have four positions. I can actually have four different variations. We call root position where we have C on the bottom. If I put the C up on top, now it's going to be E, G, A, C. That is called first inversion. If I put the E up on top, this is called second inversion, where we have G, A, C, E. If I put the G up on top, this is called third inversion, A, C, E, G. C sixth chord, root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion. It's good to practice doing that with both hands, moving up and just doing root, first, second, third inversion. If you notice, and this is for another lesson, but third inversion, A, C, E, G, that is a C sixth chord in third inversion, but it's also a minor seventh chord in root position. C sixth in root position and third inversion. Sometimes chords can have dual names. I don't want to confuse you, but I just want to make you aware of that. Now, I'm going to play this. My right hand is improvising, just playing around, with the C sixth chord in first inversion. E is on the bottom, E, G, A, C. My left hand is doing that walking bass pattern. Watch this. Try to play it. That's it. That is all I am doing. It's a fun, fun little pattern. And you can download this free on my website. I have the link below that you can print this off, share it, any piano teachers or piano students who are wanting to learn how to play this and play around with it. It's a great way to have as a resource that you can do anything you want with it because after we play that, the next page and a half, the left hand continues as it was going before but then the right hand only has chords written above. The right hand melody that is written out before is completely empty. So this is for the students to begin to improvise. And I know that seems like a scary term sometimes, and people say, I can't improvise, I was classically trained, or, uh, and they, they have these mindsets that are preventing them from experimenting. Really, it's just playing around. Now, what I want to show you are some ways that you can start to play around. Starting in measure 25 of this exercise, we have a C7th chord. 
Now, a C7 chord, if I have my C major triad, that's C, E, G, C major 7th has the major 7th interval, which is C to B. The C 7th chord is C to B flat. With the C major triad, so we have C, E, G plus the C minor 7th interval, which is C and B flat. Again, we can do root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, because we have four notes in that chord. Not too difficult, but you can do the same thing on the F7 and G7. This is F7, F, A, C, E flat is root position. First inversion is A, C, E flat, F. Second inversion is C, E flat, F, A. Third inversion is E flat, F, A, C and then you're back up to root position again. That is the F7 chord. I can do the same thing with the G7 chord, which is G, B, D, F. Root position, G is on the bottom. Then if I put the G up on top, then I have B, D, F, G. That is the G7 chord first inversion. If I put the B up on top, then I have second inversion. If I put the D up on top, then I have third inversion. If I put the F on top, now I have G, B, D, F. This is the G seventh chord in root position again. So we can start to play around with these chords. Now I'm going to start in measure 25. The left hand is continuing doing that left hand walking bass pattern, but the right hand only has chords written above. Watch as I play the chord and then I play around with the chord. Watch this. You can play around, you can do so much with it. As a fun way to play around with the right hand, this is what I want you to try to do. Take the seventh chord and break it apart. I'm only going to play the right hand just so you can practice playing around with this. Now, I play the C seventh chord, I'm going to play in root position, and then I'll just break the notes apart. Watch this. What if I go up to first inversion and I'm swinging the eighth notes where I'm doing a long, short, long, short, long, short. If we had straight eighth notes all the way in a measure and we had this pattern where instead of doing one and two and three and four and dun 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 dun, we would do bum ba da 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 long, short, long, short, long, short. And we have that swinging sound because we're swinging the eighth notes where the first one is longer the second one is shorter and that's what we're doing as we're playing this and some of these I'm throwing in are quarter notes eighth notes but what I want you to try to do is just play around with that chord and then try to do the inversion so the C seventh in first inversion is E G B flat C
I'll go back to root position. First inversion. Second inversion. Third inversion. Back up to root position. All together. And if I add a walking bass, I have this. What if I went to F and did the same thing on F? I came back to C. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the chords, and this is why theory is so important, I'm taking the chords and I'm playing around with the chords. Where I'm playing root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, and I'm swinging the eighth notes, I'm making it sound a little different, but my left hand is just steady. Now I can play the block chords, mixed together with breaking the chords apart. Watch this. It's not too difficult. I hope you enjoy watching and playing through this fun walking bass jazz song. Again, this is a free PDF on my website. Anyone can print it off and download it. It's in the comments below. If you look down below in the information about this, you can see the link to download this from my website, which is musicmotivation.com. I would love to have you visit my website. I would also love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you click down below, you can leave a comment or you can like this video and share it with family and friends. I would love to have you leave a comment about other videos you would like to have me create, whether they are tutorials or whether you would like to see more jazz, blues, new age, rock, pop, different styles, but how to learn the theory and how to apply it. That is my main purpose. The three main areas I like to focus on, one I call theory therapy, the second I call innovative improvisation, and the last is creative composition to help music students of all ages learn how to apply the theory. It's that practical application of the music theory that they can begin composing music of their own. They can take a song, they can arrange it. They can play one song in a hundred different ways. And so that is my purpose to hopefully help you, give you some helpful hints and tips that you can use in your own piano playing. Again, visit my website, it's musicmotivation.com. This is a free PDF download. You can print off the PDF. You can actually have other resources available. I have a lot of free music. I have some books and CDs that I've come out with as well. I'd love to have you check out. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Share this with any family or friends that may be interested in learning how to play a fun walking bass left-hand pattern. And I'd love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is youtube.com slash Gerald Simon, J-E-R-A-L-D-S-I-M-O-N. Thanks so much. Hope you have a wonderful day. Keep on playing. See you. Bye.